What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a spectacular day. Today we're going to be doing a little plant feeding. We've got most of our fall brassicas, actually all of our fall brassicas, at least the first round in the ground are broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, collards, kale, all that good stuff is in the ground. It has overcame its initial transplant shock. The transplants are growing. So today we're going to be talking about how we're feeding these guys and all the different techniques we're using, the different fertilizers we're using. And I've got some making up to do, especially with my cabbage. Last year I grew some pretty puny cabbage. I mean, they still kind of taste the same. A little cabbage about this size, but I'm used to growing cabbage about this size. So I want to get back to growing some good five pound plus cabbages. And to do that, we got to feed them. So last year around this time we started our first no-till plot of the 10 plots we have. This plot right here. Put a bunch of compost on it. We planted cabbage, broccoli, all that good stuff. And it was kind of an experiment. I wanted to see if just the whole not messing with the soil, not cultivating the soil, and all that compost would be enough to feed the plant. So I didn't fertilize them intentionally. And I learned that it wasn't enough to feed the plants to get some nice big healthy produce like we wanted so this year when we went no-till on this plot back here and planted all these brassicas i knew to get some big groceries i was going to have to feed them so if you watched the last garden tour i showed you how not all of our transplants in here made it just because they were looking a little weak in the greenhouse but the ones that did make it are starting to grow really fast and are looking pretty good so far like that cabbage right there it has grown a significant amount just here in the last week so we use several different techniques or methods around here to feed our plants and if you watch many of our planting videos you know we always put some type of pre-plant fertilizer in the furrow prior to planting. We try to use a balanced fertilizer for that. I've used the Harmony 543, which is chicken manure based. It works well. Lately, we've been using a lot of this Nature Safe 855, which I really like too. And once plants get up and going, we use our fertilizer injector here a lot to feed them either through a tripod sprinkler or through a drip system if we have that installed on a plot. And then we can also come in with a second round of the dry granular fertilizer and side dress our plants. We can make a little furrow beside the plant, sprinkle some fertilizer in there, cover it up, and that will additionally feed the plants as they grow. So we use a combination of granular, more slow release stuff and liquid or water soluble fertilizers which tend to be a little faster acting some of them like the fish emulsion is a little slower but most of the liquid stuff we use seems to act faster than the granular stuff now this cabbage and broccoli and stuff behind me here we put that 855 in the furrow at planting i've fed it some of the agri thrive through the overhead sprinkler one time and today i want to feed it again by side dressing it before we start fertilizing, I'll talk to you about some of these different products we're using, where we're getting them from, all that good stuff. So I'll start with the granular nature safe stuff. That's what it looks like there. Looks like animal feed, it's derived from animal feed. And we use two different types. We use a 1300 and an 855. They look exactly the same almost. There might be a little color difference in them but you wanna make sure you label your containers. I keep mine in trash cans and just keep an empty bag in there. So we've got the 1300 here, which is a slow release, but it also has a little bit of what they call ammoniacal nitrogen or ammonia-based nitrogen. So it does give it a quick little pop there and then kind of the rest of the action is slow released. And this is, comprised of feather meal, meat meal, and blood meal. So all good nitrogen sources. This is just a strictly nitrogen fertilizer for heavy feeding crops that like a lot of nitrogen. Now the 855, which we put down at pre-plant, has a lot of the same sources as the 1300. It also has some of the ammonia-based nitrogen in it, which is probably why you see that quick little pop there once the plants overcome their transplant shock. It's got meat and bone meal, feather meal, blood meal, and sulfate of potash in it 
to make a somewhat balanced fertilizer. It's not equal parts N, P, and K, but it's pretty close being 855. One good thing I like about both of those nature safe pelleted fertilizers is it's really hard to overdo it. You don't have to be super exact with it and you're not adding a lot of salts to your soils. And from my experiences, I just go with a scoop per row. Some of my rows are 30 foot long, some of my rows are 40 foot long, but I just use this scoop right here as a general measurement and just put down a scoop per row when I'm fertilizing. And so far that's working pretty well. Now we also use this stuff right here from Nature Safe, which is a 777 analysis soluble powder. It's made from corn steep liquor. So this dissolves in water and then you can inject it through the overhead sprinkler, through a drip system. I've also, for like my little um, tartar raised bed rings over there, just mix some of this in a five gallon bucket and use this pitcher to pour it on the plants. If you've just got a few plants, you can mix you up some in a bucket and do it that way. This stuff's kind of sticky. It can be a little bit messy, but uh, it seems to work pretty good for the organic fertilizer. It hits pretty quick, and so I really like it. I don't use it as much as I do some of the other stuff, but I have it, and uh, it's a good quick way to feed the plants when they need a balanced fertilizer like the 777 here. And then as far as the liquid stuff goes, we've been using a lot of this AgriThrive 332 formulation. So this is made with fish emulsion and corn steep liquor, which we do use some separately, but this has them both combined. And this stuff right here is more biologically active than standard fish emulsion, meaning it works faster and it doesn't require a lot of heat to break it down and, and get it going and for the plants to be able to absorb it. So a lot of organic fertilizers don't work that well in the cooler months because you need the heat to kind of trigger that enzymatic activity, break down those organic compounds and make those nutrients available to the plant. This stuff right here is already kind of activated, I guess would be the best way to put it. And so it's gonna work well through the winter months for us. I do have a coupon code for this. If you go to AgriThrive's website, you can use the code Lazy Dog Farm and get a 10% discount. So we've really been liking this stuff. We can mix some in a little bucket. We've been using it in the greenhouse. We inject it through the tripod. We inject it through the drip system. We use it in a variety of ways. And then we have just a standard fish emulsion here. I like this Browns brand just because it's probably the most affordable out there. Works pretty good. So this is a fish hydrolysate, not necessarily a fish emulsion. And I use this through the overhead sprinkler. I'll mix up a bucket of it sometimes. Sometimes I even use this on my cover crops. Once my cover crops get up and going, I'll run some of this through the tripod sprinkler overhead. I'll inject it through the tripod sprinkler and just use it to kind of feed the soil while that cover crop is growing. And it makes that plot kind of be in good shape and be kind of nutrient rich whenever I go to plant vegetables in it again. So this is my go-to fish emulsion. There's a lot of them out there. I buy this uh, from Seven Springs in bulk, I think four of them at a time, and uh, seem to be the most cost-effective option for just having some of this around. And one more thing I forgot to mention about this granulated nature safe here. We've had a lot of people asking, where do you get this stuff? Can you order it online? So I get it from Seven Springs Farm online, and to take advantage of the shipping costs, it's really better if you order a few bags at a time. If you just order one 50 pound bag, which is all they have it in, is 50 pound bags. If you just order one 50 pound bag, you'll get dinged on shipping pretty good. If you order multiple bags, and it stores pretty well in a trash can, by the way, then uh, the shipping isn't as bad. But you can also go to Nature Safe's website and they have a list of their reps there. You can call a rep that's local to your region and sometimes they can point you to a local store that may carry it. I've had a few viewers that were able to do that and save some money by just driving and going and getting it somewhere where they carry it. They don't really have a list of their dealers online. You just have to call the rep and uh, kind of let them point you in the right direction. But you can order it online or you can find a local store that carries it. Not a ton of places carry it, but there are more than you would think that can get this stuff. And I guess the last one to mention would be the blue stuff, the miracle Grow, the 20-20-20. I do keep a bag of that on hand. I don't use it that much anymore because I haven't had to use it, but I kind of keep it around as a rescue 
or when I'm dealing with a ton of pest pressure and I just need to push the plants really, really hard. I used it a little bit on my fall pumpkins and it seemed to help there. It's a really quick release. It's the fastest fertilizer out there that I'm aware of. It acts fast. You can really get your plants back into shape if they're struggling. But for me, it's more of a rescue thing. With a lot of this stuff we're using, we have to kind of plan ahead a little bit, kind of be on a good schedule. If something looks pretty pitiful and we need a quick fix to it, we can use the 20-20-20 for that. But uh, this plan right here has been working well so far. We just have to plan ahead. So you might be thinking to yourself, so you're telling me I need to purchase all these different fertilizers to have a successful fall garden? No, that's not what I'm saying. Most folks can get by with just having one balanced fertilizer on hand, something with equal or relatively equal amounts of N, P, and K. Just keep you something like that on hand, whether it's granular or liquid, and keep you something on hand that's just a straight nitrogen source. Most things in the garden, you can get by with using either one of those or a combination of those for some of the heavy feeding crops. My plan here, my experimentation here, that's working pretty well so far, was to give the soil a wide range of organic sources. And as those are being broken down, we have a wider diversity of microbial life, really feeding the microbes in our soil, really creating more diversity in our soil, and having the plot not just be zapped after we grow a crop there. We were able to grow corn organically for us for the first time this year with our popcorn there and it did really well so we're making some strides there we're just trying out different things i'm trying out a wide range of products so i can tell you guys you know my experiences and um, the results and how it's turning out but the average gardener just keep you a balanced fertilizer and a nitrogen source around now as far as our feeding today goes most of the stuff in this plot and the far end plot which we're going to be feeding a little bit are what I consider heavy feeders, brassicas, that like plenty of nitrogen. So we want to just give them some straight nitrogen today. But that doesn't include every single thing in this plot. I do have a row of rutabagas in the middle, and I don't want to give them just nitrogen. I want to side dress them with some more balanced fertilizer. So my take on how to determine which fertilizer to give to things kind of depends on whether you're eating the stuff above ground or you're eating the stuff below ground. In the case of things like rutabagas, beets, carrots, things like that, I'm feeding them a balanced fertilizer because I want them to have that phosphorus and potassium for some good root development because the main thing we're eating is the root. Now, the rutabagas, we eat the greens as well, but we want some nice big rutabaga roots. So I don't want to give it a bunch of nitrogen because I'll end up making all leaves and probably not a very big rutabaga root. Same thing with carrots. We give it too much nitrogen, we get all top and not a lot of carrots. So think about whether you're eating the part above ground. If you are, you're probably going to need just some straight nitrogen at some point. If you're eating what's below ground, just continue along giving it some kind of balanced fertilizer. And I should mention onions and garlic and alliums are probably the exception to that rule because we give them a lot of extra nitrogen. But for the most part, if it's below ground, we give it a balanced fertilizer. If it's above ground, we give it some extra nitrogen. Now, since we're talking about side dressing today, let's talk about how to do this. There's several different ways you can do this. Just depends on the scale or maybe what tools you have or even what kind of fertilizer you're using. So you'll see some people, if they just have a few plants, what they'll do is they'll come in here beside the plant, kind of scratch them out a little hole, sprinkle some fertilizer in there, cover it up, and boom, that's their side dressing. And that works well if you got just a few plants. Since I'm working with several rows here, I'd rather just sprinkle it along the entire row. It would take me a while if I individually fertilized each plant. So. What I like to do in the case when I have rows here is come in here with this hoe and just make me a little small trench alongside the row. We'll drop our fertilizer in there, cover it up with a rake. Now, another thing I have done in the past is not even make a trench. So if you're using inorganic fertilizer, something like a 10-10-10, 
those inorganic fertilizers are a little more volatile and you really need to get them under the soil otherwise you can lose a lot of the efficacy of them with this nature safe stuff here it's not very volatile and what i have done in the past is not even make a trench and just sprinkle it along the row here and then just take this little three tine cultivator and kind of scratch it in the soil and that works just fine too i'm going to bury it today just because i've got this thick layer of compost on here and we planted these plants pretty deep so i want to get it down a little further but with this stuff you can just sprinkle it on top of the soil and be just fine now if you've got animals that like to come eat this stuff ours aren't too bad about it then you may want to bury it but you can do this side dressing a number of different ways there's no right or wrong way to do it, it just depends on how many plants you have the scale you're working with and the tools you have you can also i forgot to mention use the wheel hoe put one plow blade on here come and make a furrow alongside the plants then switch that plow blade to the other side after you drop the fertilizer in there and cover it back up it would take me longer to switch those attachments around than it is to do all this today with just the hoe and the rake so i'm not going to fool with that but that's another good way to do it if you've got a decent sized plot all right so let's start side dressing we're going to give every row in this plot with the exception of the rutabaga row and our winter herb row we we'll give all the other rows one scoop of this 1300 it's a big old world so what did i miss california girl Give our rutabagas a scoop of 855. And I don't know why I'm standing here while the rain is falling down. And I don't know why it's crystal clear. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? And we'll treat our collards and kale to a scoop of 1300. got her did now that should keep everything pretty well fed maybe with the exception of a splash or two of agar thrive either through the drip or through the overhead probably in another couple weeks i might do that with the fish emulsion once every two weeks or so but as long as everything's looking healthy we shouldn't have to push them or fertilize them that much more we'll get some good slow release action from this stuff here I forgot to mention another reason I really like this stuff here is because if you accidentally get some of the plant leaves it's not going to burn it. If you're using something like Chilean nitrate which works really really well and it's really fast but you got to be careful can't get it on the plant leaves got to be a little bit more delicate when you're applying it. This stuff's also not going to accumulate salts in your soil and it's going to leave your soil in better shape than a salt based fertilizer would. Now obviously there are lots and lots of different ways to fertilize your garden, feed your soil, feed your plants. And I'm not trying to tell you that this is the only way or this is the way you should be doing it. I'm just showing you the way we're doing it. That way when it comes harvest time and you see the end results, good or bad, you'll know how we got there. And that's one of the main goals of this channel is to try to show you different ways to do different things. I've got enough plots here and got enough planted that I can afford to fail a little bit. But some of you out there might not can afford to fail. You're really, really counting on those vegetables you got planted being productive. So we'll mess around here. We'll experiment some stuff. We'll fail. And you can learn from our mistakes as opposed to making those mistakes yourself. And if you've got some fertilizers that you like to use in your fall garden that you really, really like, please tell me about those in the comments below so I can read through those. And I might find some good ideas that I want to try here in the future. And if you haven't already, head on over to our website at LazyDogFarm.com where we've got some awesome garden recipes, some recommended products, our garden journal where we kind of diary in written format what's going on in our gardens and different seasons. And we also got some cool Lazy Dog Farm merch you can pick up as well. 
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like, and share, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Oh, well, mm -hmm, by the beauty of your life.